All right, uh, Houston, of course, won the regular season title. And then Saturday night, they, they – um, and we'll have Jeremy Branham, who's the voice of Houston basketball. Saturday night, the night before Baylor ran into the uh, Hilton South, um, I guess you could say atmosphere and electricity. And then Saturday night, they jumped on Houston and, like, stuck their foot on their neck and broke them pretty quickly. Houston, of course, they kind of limped into the weekend too. But Iowa State – crushed the Big 12 in the tournament in Kansas City. Yeah, they did. They played exceptionally, exceptionally well. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I, I, I was very impressed with what they did. Um, you know, I, they canceled out their, their last loss to Kansas State pretty much right away. So that was, that was done. Uh, then they rolled through everybody else that they played, including uh, Baylor and Houston, and really just, you know, I, I, I think they're in a good spot going in because they play defense. They play defense. They're not, um, in the, you know, one of those teams that's in the top 50 in both, I know. But they could they could make some noise for sure. Again, also kind of stuck that they got in the UConn side of the bracket. So, But, look, they're, they're scary. You know, it, I think it's as bad news for UConn as it is for Iowa State. Just, uh, you know, if you're the number one overall seed and you've got Iowa State and Auburn and, and some of the other teams Illinois. on their side. Illinois, yeah, that's tough. But... Uh, even still, like I, I, I really like uh, what they did the other day. I've seen a lot of people, you know, and this happens every year. You know, when Iowa State or Kansas, you know, win or play in the final, and it's it's there's no um, home court. There's a home court advantage for them and nobody else. I say, okay, well then buy tickets and go. You know, like I know it's yeah. harder because you got to travel and you got to keep traveling week after week after week, but. You know, when the when the tournament was in Dallas, no one went there either. So yeah, I, I think that's a little overblown to say nobody went. I know what you're saying though, Paul. But like, I know Ashley Hodge pulled receipts, and there were more people than given credit for. You would think, based on the way it's talked about, that it was like ghost town, and that wasn't necessarily the case. But yeah, that's not the same atmosphere as uh, Kansas City. So I, I saw a lot of that back and forth about the host site. I mean, I, I don't think if you ever if you don't ever give anybody else a chance to prove they can host it, then yeah. it's always going to be the best place because yeah. you haven't been to Dallas in how many years? Um, and there's other spots you could potentially go. But yeah, it's it's not like it was in or is in Kansas City. And uh, that is Hilton South. And it was every bit of that. I know that was something that a lot of the coaches were impressed by and also frustrated by. And I know the, the saying is, you know, well, then go and beat them and, and prove it or, you know, do something different. But, I mean, you can't not pretend like that isn't a massive advantage. Mm -hmm. And not every school's built to, to be able to, to turn out like that. So credit for them to be able, for being able to do it. It certainly played a role. And then you have a great basketball team on top of that. And that was a combination that nobody in the Big 12 had an answer for last week. So uh, they went out and they earned uh, that tournament championship. And uh, yeah, got a, got a, I guess not the draw that they desired uh, the following day, but I think they'll be just fine in the tournament. Very curious about how deep of a run they make because that is a team that you circle and you go like national title possibilities. They're they're in the discussion, I think. They're not top of mind necessarily, but they're definitely not too far down the list do you get before you go, well, what about Iowa State? And what could they possibly do when they're clicking on all cylinders? And they were clicking on all cylinders uh, in KC. So that was super impressive turnout by the fans. Not surprising. We've seen them do that before. I think it just took much more center stage this this year, it seems like, and, and just felt like there's much more conversation about it because it was just so lops. I mean, it was – a hundred fans from the opposing school to like seventeen thousand plus. Yeah, it was I, well, okay, it was I, insane, and so that had to be a lot of fun for well, Cyclones fans. And then to win on top of that, um, yeah, what a week for uh, T.J. Otzelberger and company! Congratulations. I, I understand it's closer, but it's also a the the Midwest and like in certain other places, it's just a basketball love fest. Yeah. yeah now, I, if Iowa State was ten and twenty, would that many fans be there? In Kansas City for the uh, first round, they, not, they may have a bunch. They would still have a lot, though. It's, yes. a, very, it's a very passionate fan base. They well, travel well in all the sports. Uh, uh, and, and look, maybe I should go back and to be fair to Dallas, the issue isn't necessarily attendance so much it is as the area it sucks for that kind of event. Well, and but that, if it's at American Airlines Arena now, with all of what they've built up in downtown Dallas – that it, place is different than it, when it was around Reunion Arena and it was kind of there. Nah. Yeah, well, no. AAC, though, has... AAC, it, when they was last there, was barren around there. Yeah. It's not barren any longer. No, yeah. Paul, have you been yeah. there? It's yeah. Not, it's yeah, not it's barren not barren any longer. It's not like... It's not they the... Got a, but it's not power and light, though. No, it's not the power and light district, yeah. but it's not intended to be either. Yeah. And so it isn't what it was a few years ago. I'm not advocating for Dallas. I'm just saying that right. if you say, well, nobody else turns out, and the last time you even attempted it was like 
over yeah. a decade ago. Well, yeah. things changed. You know, yeah. maybe it's different yeah. because Houston fans can get. Uh, but I'm not like making this an anti KC and Iowa State thing because that's I'm I've seen either. so much of that. I'm just saying that I'm not opposed to moving it around, but I do understand of. You know what? If you don't like the home court advantage, then turn up like we who turn the, up, and nobody turns up like them. Who won the Big 12 men's basketball title last year in the tournament? Texas did. Yeah. Texas went in there and said, F you. We're going to win this tournament, no matter who else is a part of the tournament. Kansas, Baylor, whoever. They went in there and they won it. So it can be done, and, and maybe more often not, but – just thought about that. Now, one thing about Iowa State, the one thing, if you look at the Ken Palm and all the data efficiency, their defense is ranked number one, and Scott Drew brought that up, in the country. Talk about what they've done under TJ Otzenberger. I mean, it's unbelievable. They are 55th offensively, which is not bad. That's not bad, but they are the number five ranked overall offense, defensive efficiency. Houston, number two. UConn is at number one. Baylor has the sixth best offense. 281 defense, and that's been obvious. They have had, we brought that up earlier. Now, speaking of Iowa State, this is from Ryan Hammer. In the Ken Palm era, no top two seed that started the season unranked has ever made the Final Four. They averaged two wins per tournament, most recently Marquette and Purdue. Iowa State playing at an unreal level, but will they break that streak slash curse? They're playing at a level where they could and should. But, again, it's one of those trends over 20-something years that uh, I saw yesterday on my timeline. Yeah, I mean, they're they're a, a nasty bunch, and I mean that in the, the best type of way. And so uh, they're, they're ferocious, and they got all over Houston the other day. And, you know, the, the Baylor result, I mean, the combination of just playing really good defense and then what shots that you did have, you clanked them all night. That was a recipe for disaster. But then for them to turn around and just lay it on Houston mm. like they did was uh, so impressive. incredibly impressive. And you have guys now who are emerging that, you know, maybe just for uh, health or just, you know, the, the flow of the season – it just feels like they're starting to get like everybody playing really well all at the right time. And so we'll see how that carries them through. But yeah, it was an amazing uh, performance by the Cyclones. And you definitely have a, uh, a reason to return to the Kelvin Sampson, TJ Osselberger coach of the year argument if you yeah. want to. And that was, that was a fine argument to be had to begin with. I mean, you, you can see both sides of it, but uh, you could revisit that again after uh, what the, uh, ISU did to U of H. And, and so, yeah, those are two programs uh, that are going to be right there in the mix to hopefully go and, and appear and if not win a national championship. Uh, if you're looking at it from the Big 12 standpoint, I know, uh, Brett, your mark's got to feel good about the opportunities that they'll have, uh, even if it's isn't quite the amount of teams that you wanted because of Oklahoma not getting in. But at the top between uh, Houston and Iowa State and you know Baylor if they play well a lot of people love their draw to at least get to the, the Sweet 16 um, you know that's easier said than done they haven't done that since they won the national title yep. and that's three years ago now at this point so um, yeah I, I'm excited to see how this all uh, unfolds but Iowa State's clicking uh, at the right time for sure all right I want you guys to think Houston was probably as good of any as anybody throughout the year and still might be Jawan Roberts's health an extra day or two of him getting himself healthy. Iowa State didn't just smash Houston Saturday. They remember they beat him early in the conference. Yeah. They also had an incredibly tight game down in Houston. So they've played three times, and Iowa State won two of those three. So let's see if they can break that little that little uh, dam of uh, number two seeds uh, who also were unranked to start the year. All right, when we come back, Houston, they kind of